If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Okay. All right, so I got some really cool comments here. Uh, some are snidely whiplash comments. Some are just, you know, comments. Uh, the one common comment was, my skid steer smokes. Well, I tried to get it off the cigarettes, but it wouldn't stop. So, it does, it just continues to smoke. But, anyways, all jokes aside, the skid steer um, has always smoked like that for a very simple reason. That thing is always under full load. Always. It just, to be quite honest with you, I don't think that they put enough horsepower to it. It's only, it's 89 horsepower, and that machine, without fuel, oil, water, and the front attachment, is 11,000 pounds. That's 11,000 pounds. That's more than a 4010. A 4010 had 4010 or 4020. I'd say 4020. I think they were 91 or 94 horsepower. A 4020. 4020 weighed what? 9,000 pounds maybe? Um, this is a empty weight, 11,000 pound machine with 89 horsepower. Yes, it's turbocharged. Yes, it is. You know, it is what it is. Let's put it that way. Um, so when you see me work in the hydrostat, that thing's constantly, constantly hitting. Let's see, I'm playing with my camera here. That thing is constantly hitting the uh, hitting the limit of the of its horsepower. It's, it's reaching full horsepower, so of course it's going to smoke. Um, I don't think it's blue smoke. Blue smoke would be bad, um, but you know it is what it is. Plus, plus the thing's actually. Got a fair amount of hours on it. If y'all didn't know, that thing's got damn near 3,000 hours on it. And uh, the majority of them were put on by me. Okay. So, yeah, so when you get something that has, you know, that many hours on it, I do change the oil regularly. I change it in the hubs about twice as often as it says it's supposed to. Because if you don't, well, actually, I smell, I smell some oil there. If you don't change it often enough, you end up with this major problem. It costs you like five grand, <laughs> and that is the front or the hubs, the drive act, drive hubs will go bad because there is so much weight that it's pushing. So, anyways, by the time you're done. With that 11,000 pound machine, putting another, well, let's see, three bales, 15, that's 4,500 pounds. You put another 4,500 pounds on the front of the machine and then start moving that around. So now you're somewhere, hell, by the time you're done, you're looking at 16,000 pounds being moved. On hydrostat, which is a 20% reduction in horsepower anyway, that's correct, 20% loss in a hydrostatic transmission, um, and you know, you're looking at 16,000 pounds or so. And that's just to move it, and the hydraulics and stuff. So 16,000 pounds, 89 horsepower, it's going to smoke. Uh, I always thought that this, the next newer model, the 333D, or E, I think it was E, ABC D, yeah, it was 333D, was a better model. It had more horsepower by 10 or so. No, it was more than that. I think it was 101 horsepower, which is basically the same machine. Had different, different drive axles under it, drive planetaries under it, and. Uh, with a, with a lot more horsepower. So, I don't think they smoked as much. Uh, I don't know though, you know, because I've never ran one. Well, I did run one. And it was snappier. Had a lot more power, seemed to have a little more ground speed. And it just, it was just a better machine all around. I mean, the interior of it was an actual cab. 
and even though this one does it's a five cylinder diesel I think they could turn the screw on it up to about 110 horsepower without any problem and that would probably be more in line with what uh, it, it requires but anyway I'm just gonna go ahead and finish wrapping these bad boys up it is Friday the Friday before Christmas and uh, I'm hoping everybody has a good Christmas this year um, try to try to be good to one another try not to be a, a jealous um, prick to your friends and family because you know what happens when you're a jealous prick to your friends and family they'll disown you now, be jealous of nobody don't let anybody tell you you can't do something in your life that is positive and productive um, you know and uh, if somebody advises you not to do something that could potentially be harmful to you or others you go ahead and you listen to them because more than likely they've already done it and they know what they're talking about <laughs> I personally have led an interesting life full of stresses and disappointments which what would life be without stresses and disappointments it would just be I don't know what is life without stresses and disappointments it was not even life um, but if you can reduce those you'd be good so I'm gonna set you all here on this bale and you can watch me unload this bad boy
Okay, one more thing about the uh, people that stole my hay up at Point Mountain. Uh, yeah, they did. They stole 65 bales. Um, they were very well equipped. They were. It was stolen actually rather rather closely to when it was baled because uh, it was stored outside obviously there was no tarp or anything over it um, and it was in a difficult place to go to get it and <laughs> the uh, yeah so they were pretty well equipped but you know they weren't satisfied with just stealing the hay yeah I'm not saying it's the same people but you pretty much guess there's really not that many people around that are sinister douchebags that you know they congregate in one area I guess but uh, usually when one person's a total douchebag there's more than one person that's a total douchebag so let's see here yeah this is what you get alright so what they did if you can notice there's a very nicely cut string there see um, they cut the center strings out like this. They cut these center strings out. This was retied. Cody retied it. That's why these bales are really super loose. Um, so they cut the center. Here's one where they cut it out. And uh, Cody didn't retie it. But he's retied these back together so that we don't lose them. Um, what they did was they cut the center strings out and then they went along to the outer string. Yes, the outer strings here. And they cut that twine halfway so that it looked like you could grab the bale. I mean, they weren't stupid. Well, they're stupid, but they're cunning. Let's put it that way. Is you don't have to be smart to be cunning. You just have to be a douchebag that's cunning. So, anyways, what they did was they cut the, uh, they cut the, uh, uh, cut the outer strings. Okay, so what they did was they cut the strings halfway through. I'm gonna, I'll show you right here. So there's six strings on each bale. They cut these completely off, these four in the middle. And then they went along and they just, just nicked these enough so that when you put the pressure on with the skid steer or the, the loader, the front end loader, pop, you'd pop those strings. So we've lost several. So not only did they steal 65 bales, they sabotaged another 20 bales to the point where uh, if we didn't catch what they had done, uh, we broke one bale, and then Timothy went over and looked at it, and he realized what it was, what was happening. So, here we got cars. This is like the most busiest road today. There's my mom. And, uh, when we realized what the hell they were doing, uh -oh, somebody's calling me, we, we just stopped grabbing and started to, uh, I see who the hell's calling me. It's dead. All right, we just stopped and then we we repaired them.